if I could ask the Minister for Health and Social Care what the policy of his department is regarding patients who do not attend hospital appointments and when they are discharged from further care. Thank you. Well, on the Minister for Health and Social Care, Mr Ashford. Thank you, Mr President. A did not att attend policy was previously created in July 2016, but was not ratified due to the turnaround of staff at the time, including the Chair of the Policy and Procedures Committee, the Special Projects Officer who wrote the policy, and the external consultant who was brought in to review services. Since we have now filled the post of a hospital's performance manager, this will be reviewed and the policy will be ratified and implemented by the 30th of April this year. The urgency of the referral and whether clinical input is needed before the patient information centre team can discharge patients back to their GP is decided by the consultant. A referral back to the GP can be made usually after a patient has DNA'd two, three times. Currently, patients would be offered another appointment, or for certain specialities, the healthcare professional may write to the patient and discharge them back to the GP after one or two DNAs. Supplementary question, Dr. Allenson. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to thank the um, Minister for, for his reply. Is he aware of a number of cases where patients have been informed of, a, of a, an appointment actually after that appointment has taken place, or not? informed of an appointment which has then been cancelled or actually not known that their appointment was there and then received the uh, DNA letter. And surely what we need to do is make sure that one, those patients who cannot attend appointments can inform the, the hospital accordingly, and two, that they are adequately told when appointments are cancelled and when they're actually made. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Mr. President. I can confirm I am aware of a couple of cases, and in fact, I was made aware of one in particular <coughs> yesterday uh, where the person found out about their appointment on the actual day. This links in with several <coughs> strands, Mr. President. First of all, the digital strategy that the department's looking to roll out. I think in the modern world, the fact that we're still highly reliant on sending letters out or writing to patients at all is very 20th century, if not even 19th century, and we need to be moving more towards people being alerted to appointments via email, via a text, letters going out via email as well, and that is in hand as part of the department's digital strategy. Um, also, the booking systems within the hospital, that again is something I've spoken of in here that needs to be reviewed, and in fact one of the things that I mentioned about the policy that will be coming in is one of the other things that's a major part of this policy is in relation to clinic cancellation or reduction, where it, it makes quite clear that, uh, that uh, clinics should not be cancelled due to, for instance, planned annual leave, uh, professional study or leave or where no locum cover is available is for the clinics to make sure that they can actually still operate so patients shouldn't be learning that their appointments have been cancelled or moved at short notice. So for instance the policy will bring in a minimum of six weeks notice of planned annual leave professional study in order to try and deflect any impact caused in the um, clinics. In relation to the actual specific question, of course, around patient cancellation, because again, if patients find out at short notice they've got an appointment, it may well be the case that the patient already has prior bookings so can't attend. In relation to that, the policy is quite clear that discretion can be used by the consultant, so it's not a case of if they do not attend for two, they are guaranteed two or three, they're going to go back to the GP. The, there is written into the policy that the consultant actually has that flexibility. So if you have someone who's not attending because they have regular ill health or there's another reason, then the consultant does have that flexibility to change the policy. Honourable Member Ramsey, Mr Hooper. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I wonder if the Minister is also aware of instances whereby patients ha have appointments. Those appointments are cancelled at short notice or are booked on the incorrect days. I have an example of a constituent who was booked an appointment that was a year uh, previous to the actual date, so 2018 rather than 2019. So well done, Department of Health there. Uh, the question then is, of course, when these appointments are, are they don't exist or they, they have to be cancelled. The patient is then put back on the list to get another appointment, but it could be another X number of months before they get a new appointment. So where these administrative errors are happening in the first place, patients can be waiting a period of time for an appointment. They finally get it. It's a date they either can't make because it's at sh short notice, it's cancelled at short notice, or it's at a date that's already gone past. The department then rebooks them on another appointment, but it's another three, four, five, six-month wait. So I'm just wondering if the minister is aware of this issue and what he's trying to do about it. 
Minister to reply. Thank you, Mr President. I am aware of the issue, and I've had a similar issue with a constituent of mine. Um, again, this is where the new policy will kick in, uh, Mr President, because there is provision again within the new policy that if a patient, <coughs> through no fault of their own, is being continuously rebooked, their, their length of wait will be taken into account in relation to that, which, to be perfectly frank, I don't think in all cases it is at the moment, because like Mr Hooper, I'm aware of similar situations where people are getting rebooked and they're being told, see you in eight months, nine months, and that's not acceptable from my point of view. Um, if they've already been waiting and the reason for rebooking is not down to something that they themselves have done, then we should be taking that weight into account and the new policy does so. It also ties in again, Mr President, with what I said before about the digital strategy. The booking system needs to be one across the hospital. It's easy to manage. And, you know, I'm very digitally minded, as honourable members know, and I think longer term, the holy grail is where people can go in and book clinics themselves online and be able to make appointments. That's a long way off, Mr President, but as a first step, definitely text reminders, emails, that is what we've got to be working towards.